right, hello again, YouTube. We're doing a second video, as you can see. Why are we doing a second video? Because about five minutes ago, a big horse trailer, probably from uh, Red Phone or Red whoever up the street. But um, a few minutes ago, it started raining, just opened up. I got an alert on my phone that we had heavy weather coming and sat on the porch with this coffee that I just went and got out of the house. Um, so came back out to continue my garden chores and it's raining. And none of it is really stuff that is overly important. I'm going to get the bone meal after my wife's still not home. She, uh, I think I think one of her co-workers is moving to day shift, so they're having breakfast. I think that's what the reason that she was going to be late. I think that's why they're having breakfast, because somebody's going to day shift and they're celebrating that. But none of that is the purpose of this video. This is the purpose of this video. These are the tools that I use the most in my garden. And first off, this travel mug. This travel mug... Every morning, I make coffee and put it in this travel mug. And for the two hours that I'm in the garden, this is the coffee I drink. This is what it looks like. I'm just kidding. You guys don't have to see me drink coffee, but I thought that'd be funny. Um, but that is something I use that every single morning. That comes out, and um, that's the coffee mug that I bring out with me. This knife here is always in the park, the pocket of my gardening clothes. And the reason I, it's a, it's a hawk bill knife. See, it's got the curve to it. And what this is good for is say this tomahawk, this rigging ax handle is a stem that I want to cut. I, I like a, I'm pruning or I'm harvesting. The reason I like this curved blade, as you can see, you can go behind it and pull through it. Works really nice for pruning suckers off of tomatoes. Pruning suckers off of anything, I use this. This is a um, the brand name. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Anyway, the brand name is the same as this knife here, which I'm going to get into. Truly Garden. Now, it's, it's a cheap knife. It's like 14, 15 bucks. And I only use it for cutting plant material this this only prunes and harvests it's not i've i've tried using it to shape wood for a little steak or something for the garden it's not good metal for that it's 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 a good knife for its intended purpose which is no well, there you can see it which is pruning a pruning of of green plants and um harvesting so I don't use it for much else than that because when I first did it, it kind of dented the blade as I was um, as I was whittling something with it. So I don't really do that anymore. I, I had to clean it back out again. I had to get the, the chips out of it, which was kind of a pain. But it's like a $15 knife. And I got it solely for the purpose of having a pruning knife and for harvesting. I keep it very sharp. And it goes through everything. That's the, the good point about having a knife that has really um, cheapy steel to it. Cheapy stainless steel. You can you can really sharpen that nice. Um, but this is this is the knife that's always in the pocket of my gardening clothes. My guard the pants that I wear in the garden. And that's the reason I use it. This is just a set of secateurs or or hand pruners whatever you want to call them um i don't even know what brand it is i think i got it at there's a local store called ocean state job lot and it sells different things it, it's like a i really don't even know how to describe job lot but you can buy everything from tools to candy and food and preserves it's a cool store and it's all cheap as hell so I bought these there, and they're really much nicer than I ever expected them to be. I've had these for probably four or five years now, 
and I really just thought they would fall apart. But they're they're great. They're really good bypass pruners, bypass clippers. You can see they go past the anvil there. And um, this comes off. Yeah. You unscrew this, and you can take this whole blade off. And you can sharpen that with, um, I usually just use a Dremel tool or, you know, the Harbor Freight Dremel tool with a little sanding wheel on it. And that gets it, oh, so much sharper than anybody's ever going to need it. But this is good for, um, I used this up at the church to pull some vines out, to cut some vines so that I could get to the base of the vine and get it and dig it out. Um, I'm going to use it to clean up the hydrangea plant that I really have to clean up i cut it all the way down last year with the hopes that it'd green up this year and it did but now i gotta cut out sticks um so these are a nice these are a nice tool these go in my back pocket this one here goes in my right front pocket of my uh, the pants i wear in the garden i'm gonna have a little bit more coffee and finally we got this knife here i've got other gardening tools that i use but these are my most used tools. Now this knife, it looks like it's this big macho um, Rambo knife, which is kind of cool, uh, honestly. But um, it's really, it's what's known as, and I got to do this one-handed, so I'm sorry. This is a Hori Hori. That's what it's called. And it's it's a root knife. It's a knife that's made, and it's by the same people who made that little thing there, uh, Truly Garden. This, I have to say, is incredibly better quality than that little guy there. But that's fine, because literally all I'm using that knife for is cutting, for pruning, and harvesting. Any heavy-duty cutting that I'm doing is probably going to be either with this knife or um, I have a little open L that, that's around. It's, it's the knife that I keep in my regular clothes. But um, sometimes I'll have a buck knife with me. It all depends. But um, this knife, as you can see, it's got a little concavity to it, and it's got marks on it to give you measurements and it's it's essentially a sharpened shovel that you can wear like a knife and this here is all um you can see it right can you see it that's all serrated so this where this really really shines is if you have turf or if you have a, a root a really, really, like if I were to, see those, see those bushes there at the front of the church there? If those, if we had to take those out, in addition to using um, like a mattock or a Pulaski and a shovel, I would have this. Because if there's a good thick root under there, you don't want to put something like this in the dirt and cut it because it's going to dull that up but that's what this is made for cutting roots and digging it's it's essentially a garden trowel with a serrated edge on it and so when i bought this when i had when my wife bought me this i was working for a um a landscape construction company down in the southern end of rhode island almost in actually the shop that I would drive to every morning was in Connecticut. And we did a lot of ornamental gardening. We did a lot of shrubs. We did, and I actually, I used to have a really nice pair of Felco shears. Uh, it's like a $60 version of these. Uh, those were like 14, 15 bucks. But I ended up losing those. But I would, I would, it, my two most used things when I was working there was this knife and a pair of shears like this. And it was, a, it was a lot of planting ornamentals, a lot of planting flowers, a lot of trimming hedges, a lot of, a lot of really high end, um, gardening 
everything had to everything had to be perfect it was you can probably tell from the, the tone of my voice it was a massive pain in the ass um i i like gardening i like doing landscaping i don't like doing it for rich people in watch hill the resort community down there that i worked in because everything has to oh it has to be perfect it has to be perfect I mean, there were lawns that we'd cut that it, it would be $500 to cut the lawn, just and we'd do it twice a week. So the company was making a, a grand off of one lawn. It was ridiculousness. I, I didn't like it. But this tool planted so many ornamental grass bulbs, like the little the thing like this. Oh, God. If you drive through Watch Hill and you see ornamental grass i probably planted it with this but um that this thing it's it's great for weeding it's great for getting um the other yesterday one of my corn plants was cocked at an angle like this and i wanted it to be up so i cut a circle around it nice big circle like the size of a basketball and propped it back up and tamped it down and this is the tool that i use to do it um my friend Chris told my friend Chris Grissom told me to do it that way. He said to dig it with a shovel, but I mean this is what I used. He's the one who told me how to fix the plant. Um, so yeah, these are these are my most used tools in my garden for growing food. Some honorable mentions, I guess we could say. As you can see, I have a bucket here. This is this is the uh, bird and deer netting that I need to put up. Some honorable mentions from that bucket. We have, and I'm opening it with my other hand so I can show you. We have this little, it's an open L saw. Just a little saw. It cuts on both the pull and the push. And it goes through just about anything you want it to. Again, I don't use it in the dirt. That's what that's for. But I have I have that. That's a nice little saw for, and it locks. You lock it with a ring like any open L. But um, I use that for doing all of the the pruning on like that tree there, or that tree back there that I have to get up and do different pruning with to keep the the. Um, Although I did cut a bunch off of that with a sawzall. To keep the shade off the garden. What else we got in here? Uh, twine. You never have enough twine. Uh, I've already gone through three or four rolls of this this year. Building different things. Fixing different things in the garden. It's actually raining really good right now. Um, another thing of twine in there. A regular offset trowel. Sometimes that's a little bit easier to use than this. There is this. I, I like this thing. There's obviously WD-40. <laughs> I have a little um, hand cultivator. I have a long-handled one that's my most used long-handled tool in the garden. But this is really good for, again, this was always in my in the bag that I would take with me when I was doing the gardening in Watch Hill. Um, this was really good for around all of those, and you can't really see, so I don't know why I'm showing you. Around all of the like bushes and stuff that you have to get under. You're on all fours anyway, so you just take this and that rakes out all the um, the weeds and the you can get a hold of vines with it and stuff like that. So little small handheld cultivator. Finally, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Good pair of cheapy leather gloves that you can see I don't really use them that much. I've never really been one that wears gloves a lot, but these are nice if you're going after like thorns or something. Um, I don't get poison ivy, so they don't get used for that, but anything that I know might tear up my hands i'll use these and finally 
This is a rigging axe. You can see it's got a big waffled head. It's 28 ounces, got a long handle. This is actually made, and that's what I was using it for, <clears throat> only occasionally, because um, most of it's air guns now. But this was made to build oil rigs, wooden oil rigs. And then after World War II, you had the housing boom, and everybody was using these in the tracts of California. To, because you can, you can drive a, I have, um, you can drive a framing nail with this in two wax, one to set it, just a little to set it, and then you bang it in, you bang it in. And it'll drive really nice. You can drive 16 penny framing nails with this, with two wax. And I've used it for that when our the air the air compressor wasn't working and we had to we really had to get stuff done. I was I was using this, but where I find this really shines is as a bushcraft axe, as a as a garden axe, as something that I'm going to use outdoors to as an axe and to like drive in stakes and stuff. And I find that I use this quite a bit. I made all of the all of the fence posts for the guy. Why is that? Oh, it's got stuff on it. Hey. Now maybe you can see. Yeah, look at that. All of the fence posts I made with this. The little posts that the um, the bean trellis has there. Chop the ends of them so that they're they're pointed. No, they'll. they'll and that's actually the board I did it with, so I wouldn't be doing it on the cement. Um, this is what I formed them with. And then I beat them into the ground with it. So when I build the cold frame and the hotbeds, this is the axe that I'm going to use to make the um, to make the little stakes that I'm going to put it up with. So these are, these are my main tools that I really find very useful in the garden. And I figured since it's raining and I really can't do much anything else, um, I'd make a quick video on them. So there you go. Just some interesting garden tools. Another honorable mention. Muck boots. Absolutely love those. I wear those 90% of the time I'm in the garden. They're waterproof. They're warm. Incredibly comfortable. I like them quite a bit. I've always wanted a pair of muck boots. My wife got them for me for Christmas this year because she knows we're doing all the... We finally bought the house and we're able to do the farming and everything, so... I needed a good pair of muck boots. I couldn't keep wearing the Chepe boots, the white boots, because those were... Um, they're not... They're nice, but they're not warm enough for, uh, for, like, winter work. You have to wear really thick socks. So, these are, these are the muck boots that I wear. Those are the tools that I use. And this is an extra unexpected video where I'm telling you, I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable. Ooh, my hand's shaking. I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable and that God is with you. Thank you.